know, latest development. I guess Jamie Spears is now out. What's uh, what are your thoughts? So Jamie Spears yesterday was suspended by Judge Brenda Penny as conservator. Now, a lot of people are disappointed, especially a lot of the most ardent Britney fans, because they really wanted the the um, conservatorship to be over as of yesterday. But interestingly, it was Britney's own lawyer who didn't want the conservatorship to end yesterday, but wanted Jamie to have, you know, a temporary caretaker replacement. And there's actually a very good legal reason for why Rosengard asked for that. And what is that reason? The reason is because if the conservatorship would have terminated yesterday, then it would just be over. But actually, by suspending Jamie Spears and appointing a caretaker conservator, now Jamie has to hand over all records of transactions of the conservatorship. This is going to include records of communications between Jamie and Brittany's former court appointed counsel, Sam Ingham. It's going to give us a treasure trove of evidence. Now, if Jamie refuses to do this, he's in big trouble. If Jamie goes ahead and does it, he's probably also in big trouble because it's going to show millions of self-enrichment. So you actually think that there was a lot, because you were a lot more neutral on Jamie a few weeks back. And now has there been new information where you're seeing that um, there was a lot of merit to what, um, you know, Brittany was uh, um, upset about? Well, you know, so we've got two brand new documentaries over the past five days, a superb New York Times documentary released on Friday and an almost equally good, in my opinion, Netflix documentary released on Tuesday. It corroborates a lot of what Brittany has been saying all along. And I want to, you know, I got to caution people again, you know, Judge Brenda Penny yesterday didn't say things like, well, I watched a documentary, therefore, that's not what judges do. But things that were alleged in the documentary by third parties that were already alleged by Brittany can be brought into evidence in court. And that's what Brittany's lawyer began to try to do yesterday. And some of those, for example, are allegations of Jamie double and triple dipping. We already established during our last conversation that conservators are allowed to get paid. There's no yes, problem with that. Yes, but not double or triple dipping. There's definitely, well, conservators under California law cannot have a conflict of interest. Is it a conflict of interest if a conservator is making like, you know, $16,000 a month as conservator and is also getting a percentage of a Las Vegas um, you know, uh, tour and a global tour, I think there's a very good argument to be made that that's a conflict. And we're going to find that out in the records that Jamie's going to have to hand over as part of the conservatorship suspension. Interesting. And um, so the last time we talked, um, there was concerns about Brittany and, you know, her little incident with her housekeeper. All of this basically gets thrown out the window now, right? Because these other um, evidence that has surfaced uh, seems to make that moot. Um, is her credibility still in question? Where does that stand right now? That's a really interesting question because while I think her credibility was in question before, particularly with the very ill-timed event around her housekeeper, the court at this point hasn't insisted, as we talked about before, you know, Brittany, before we decide that we're going to consider letting the conservatorship lapse in the conservatorship, you have to be able to produce evidence that you're able to deal with your affairs. There is a very strong argument, argument to be made that this conservatorship never should have happened. And the legal reason for that is actually really pretty simple. Back in 2008, while it's pretty evident by Brittany's own admission that she was experiencing a lot of turmoil, there was actually never a legal determination made in California court that the standards for a conservatorship were met. And those standards are very simple that she'd lack the capacity to provide food and shelter or clothing for herself, or that she was able to resist undue influence or fraud. The great irony, sadly and ironically, we know today, I'll end by saying this, is that the undue influence and fraud that came into her life was from her dad, the conservator. Wow. So this actually helps her case. Would you say it helps her case? 
I think, well, it, there's several cases now. So number one, it helps in the conservatorship. I'm convinced that we're going to see in a court of law coming soon near you, literally near you if you're in California, another Spears versus Spears. I think there's going to be a civil suit where Britney tries to go after her father. Uh, but I think that Jamie Spears is not a dummy. And he's probably already made himself judgment proof. So even if a civil suit like this were to happen, I don't think Britney's ever going to collect the scent. I think maybe she would do this as some kind of cathartic exercise. However, depending on what is seen and what is shown as evidence is collected by the court about what Jamie's done during the conservatorship, there absolutely could be criminal counts against Jamie Spears by the state of California. Mm -hmm. So you think that's very likely, and that's uh, probably a big reason why he was removed. Now, it's, it's definitely possible. Great, great. So uh, stay tuned, I guess, for more developments uh, once. Um, so he is uh, court ordered now to um, basically release all these uh, documents, financial documents. Is that where it stands? Correct. That's what. That's exactly what has to happen. To and that the... is our next step. Yes, to the temporary conservator, who's essentially the caretaker conservator. Awesome. Well, I want to move the conversation now to the replacement conservator, uh, who is the CPA. Yep. Can you tell us a little bit about why he was chosen? Because he's a CPA, because he's got That's great it. financial background. Exactly. And it, honestly, it's a caretaker conservator. The next hearing is already set. I believe the date now is November 12th. And that's when most people expect the conservatorship's going to end. Okay, so you actually think that there's not going to be a, um, so this is a uh, temporary and um, there won't be another permanent replacement. You believe um, most likely that this conservatorship will just end period. Well, you know, to borrow from Britney's al album title, this has always been a circus, right? But I actually think that we're nearing the end of this. There's also a much broader impact of Britney's conservatorship, and it's a very good thing. Something I want to point out that's happening in California is there's an assembly bill called 1194 that's sitting in front of Governor Newsom right now. And this is a bill that if he signs it by next week, which is his deadline, I believe, will come into law January 1st, and it totally reforms conservatorship law and aims to end conservatorship abuse in California. It could also be a lesson all over the country. One of the things that 1194 specifies is that somebody who was in Britney's situation when the conservatorship began, or any time during the conservatorship, can go out and hire their own lawyer, which she was not allowed to do for 13 years wow. until Judge Penny allowed her to do so in July. So Britney could be treated by history as being a hero for all of those who've been abused by a conservatorship. Now it's up to Governor Newsom to sign the thing. Yeah, it's pr probably very likely that he's going to sign the bill. So that's uh, this would set a great precedent in going forward. Would you I would say? think that agree. I would agree that optically, especially after he just survived the recall vote, uh, that not signing it by the due date yeah. next week wouldn't accomplish a lot. I think that he will sign it and it would come into law. And I've actually spoken over the past 24 hours with observers from other states who believe it would be a really good sample bill for their state judiciary uh, to look at. Yeah. So California will basically set the tone for this uh, reform around conservatorships. Yes. Do you I Aaron, actually, believe yes. that's a good thing? I think it's a great thing. And actually, I refer to that clause in 1194 of myself as the Brittany clause, that one clause that specifies that somebody under a conservatorship should be able to get their own counsel. And it's even when that person is deemed not to have the capacity to do so. You know, let's remember one thing about Brittany's court appointed counsel. Her court appointed counsel, Sam Ingham, earned over, earned, I'm going to use that term loosely, was given over $3 million during the time that he was Britney's conservatorship. He had years where he was earning over $520,000 as the attorney for the conservatorship. Uh, that's really difficult to digest when Britney all along has been saying, I just want to hire my own lawyer. So 1194, if it passes, would address that in what I like to think of as the Britney clause. Maybe we can coin that here. Yeah, it, seem, it seems only fair, right, to be able to pick your own counsel. I mean, that is uh, uh, that that sounds like justice to me. 
And, well, and especially it does. And, you know, I want people who watch this to understand that the nature of a conservatorship is such a powerful legal entity that the conservator legally actually becomes the conservatee. Let me give you a bizarre example of that. Let's say that Britney Spears wants to do something and Jamie Spears' conservator would have said, no, Britney doesn't want to do it. He's speaking as Britney. He is legally Britney in that situation. That's how powerful conservatorship mm -hmm. is. The conservatee has no legal voice. Yeah, and um, you think that going forward, um, there's going to be this will give more checks and balances, basically, to the powers of the conservator, which yes. seems uh, really abusive at this point. And yes, I totally agree. And by the way, one of the other things in 1194 that's critically important is conservators that don't have a financial background. Let's include Jamie Spears and not the guy that's coming in who's a CPA. They would have to undergo training for conservatorship fraud Good. through a financial lens, and there would be regular checks on them by the court, which is again, something that hasn't happened for 13 years, which is why Jamie Spears has been so easily able to self-enrich. Now, Aaron, for the average person that's under a conservatorship, um, obviously there's not this big amount of wealth and money to uh, you know, have uh, to be abusive, but will these checks and balances flow down to uh, your average person under a conservatorship? And would yes. that be a good thing? Or would that cause um, a lot more paperwork and burden um, in that process? It would definitely there's that be a balance. good thing. Oh, totally great question. It would definitely be a good thing. And I'll tell you why, because it's going to influence, it's going to impact and influence regular people much more so than Brittany. For Brittany to, you know, lose $3 million of her estate yeah, to a lawyer is the equivalent of someone who doesn't have means losing $100. Yes. And these abuses are widespread and rampant, but we don't read about them because it's not a very good story saying someone who is a conservatee had $100 taken in bank fees where they shouldn't have been taken. That's not, not a good story thing. for the other times. Yeah. Great, great. So, um optimistic i guess we can um check in again um uh, november you said right is the date um that we're waiting for for the fine i guess the final trial exactly which we expect it would be again let's remember though that there's always so many twists and turns right True. in this case you just don't know but the way it's looking right now is that mm -hmm. when this Hearing. And again, you know, hearings get changed for a variety of reasons, right? But I believe it's set for November 12th right now. If it happens on November 12th, I think the kind of Las Vegas betting line is that the conservatorship ends at that point. And Jamie Spears is either in a vat of hot water or a vat of hot oil, depending on how bad the evidence is. Yeah. So right now it's just pretty damning for the dad. Doesn't look good at the moment with all the allegations that are beginning to be corroborated. Again, the last time we spoke, it was Britney saying things, and that's one person. And now it's a lot of people corroborating it, and some of this being brought into actual evidence in a court of law. So that trial on November 12th will have a lot of fireworks and a lot of juicy details, I'm sure. So and we'll a lot of Britney them. fans on the street. Yeah. I love it. Do you have any other um, things you want to tell the Hollywood Times audience before we end this? No, I think that that kind of covers it all. I think we're up to date as to where we are this morning when we're recording. Again, by the time this gets published, there could be new information. Everybody should watch their feeds. Absolutely. And I can't help but ask you, I love that view behind you. Which Are you in New York? Uh, I'm based in Montreal. Our company's in Philadelphia. Oh, okay. So you're, um, you're in Montreal and that's the Montreal it's, skyline. Beautiful. It's the Montreal skyline. Exactly. I love it. Okay, Aaron, thank you so much for connecting with me this morning and I'll have a write up and I'll send up, uh, send the link to you as soon as Thanks, possible. Thanks, Mark. Talk soon. Okay. Have a nice Bye. day. Take you care. You too. Aaron. Bye. Thank Bye. you.